Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 1 said, And Moses went and spoke these words unto all Israel. He said unto them, I am 120 years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. Also the Lord hath said unto me, Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. He was talking to Moses. Moses was not going to get to go over. Verse 3 said, The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee and he will destroy these nations from before thee and thou shalt possess them and Joshua he shall go over before thee as the Lord has said and the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Sihon and to Og kings of the Amorites and unto the land of them whom he destroyed and the Lord shall give them up before your face that you may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. Now that, that was the word of the Lord. That was the direction that the Lord gave through Moses. The final instructions, the last time they would ever see him. And he was giving to them the promise of God, the prophetic word of the Lord the direction of God, you're going to go over this land, but you're not going over by yourself. The Lord is going to go before thee. You're going to drive out the inhabitants of the land. You are going to take their land. And Joshua is going to be in my stead, and he's going to go before thee with the Lord as the Lord hath commanded. But the instruction to the people was given in verse 6, be strong and of good courage. Fear not, neither be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Courage leads to confirmation. Now, there really is no small act of courage. You can't compare the courage that it takes to battle cancer with the courage it takes to become a doctor or an astronaut or the leader of a country. All of these are very brave acts. You can't compare the courage it takes to become, say, an Olympian with the courage it takes to raise a physically or mentally challenged child. Both of these are amazing feats of courage and bravery. You can't compare a firefighter who saves a life perhaps with an eight-year-old child who consistently stands up to a bully. Both of these are heroic. But most of us don't think of ourselves as, as brave people. And yet that's exactly who we are. There is a courage and a bravery inside of all of us that is dying to get out. And I would imagine that if you were to reflect on your life one decade at a time, I'm sure that you might be surprised how many situations and how many things come to your mind and memory. And you remember how much courage that it took for you to stand in the face of one opposition or to face a decision or to go through a storm. Inside of each of us is a hero. And I think especially in the season it is important. Matter of fact, it may be time 
for us to celebrate our courage and our bravery and to celebrate our fearlessness with which we embrace and we face things on a daily basis. And I think as we do, we can begin to think of ourselves as bold people who are sometimes fearless instead of fear-filled people who are sometimes bold. I think we need to make a decision today to, to rise up in courage. We, we face things on a daily basis that we don't really think require courage, but they actually do. One of them is apologizing. We don't think that apologizing requires courage, but it takes courage to admit when we are wrong. It's a bold act to admit when we make a mistake. Only cowards, only weak people cannot right a wrong or admit when they have made a mistake. Apologizing enhances our relationship with people. It's a big, it's a big act of courage. It takes courage, especially in today's world, to be yourself. Don't imitate anyone. I want to preach to somebody today and tell you that it might be time for you to take off your mask and just be who you are. Now, I'm not talking about just be a jerk, but you understand what I'm talking about. Maybe time to allow yourself to become vulnerable or to see perfection in your imperfections because who you are is a gift to the world and you have to allow yourself to be unique, it takes courage, it takes bravery for us to be ourselves. It takes bravery and courage to take responsibility. You are where you are in life because of the decisions you made. It's time to quit blaming people for the issues in your life, but it's going to take courage for you to take responsibility. If you don't like what you see, you can change it. And I want to tell you today that that responsibility is going to bring freedom and liberty to your life. It's going to get the monkey off of your back. It's going to help you to become the person that God has created you to be. I would say that it even takes courage to keep your commitments. We live in a day and a time where commitment is not something that is coveted by people. Uh, people make a commitment in tomorrow, six hours from now or an hour from now. They forgot the commitment or they, they changed their mind. We see it with careers and education. We see it in marriages. And keeping your commitment requires courage. When you keep your promises, you build self-respect. You build respect in others. But it takes courage to do that. Commitment requires Courage. I believe also that, that letting go of the past requires courage. Uh, it's time to stop wallowing over what could have been. My, my dad used to say, there's no sense crying over spilt milk. It is what it is at this point. It's already over. You can't unring the bell. All of those cliches that we know apply to letting go of the past, but it does Take a brave person to do it. You're going to have to forgive yourself. You're going to have to forgive others. What happened is over unless you decide to keep it alive by reliving it in your mind over and over and over. And so I'm preaching to you today, and I'm telling you that it takes courage to move on from your past and to let it go. I think it takes courage to grow, to grow in general. We can grow specifically. We can grow in general. We have to learn something new on occasion. There's times we have to get up out of the rut, get up out of our bed of comfort. We have to step into the, to the unknown. We have to change the way that, that we do things. It doesn't matter if you get it right the first time. Try again. You know, the old adage says, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. Failures are not the people that make mistakes. Failures are the people that refuse to get up after their mistake. You are not perfect. You are going to make mistakes. 
And so it doesn't matter how if you succeed the first time. Try again. Give yourself permission to be a beginner. You're not going to be an expert on day one. Growth brings new opportunities. And growth, yes, it requires courage. I believe it requires courage to help people, to help others, to help someone who isn't going to help you back, to be unselfish. It takes a brave person to live a life of unselfishness, to deny yourself so that your neighbor can be blessed, to help others when, they, when, when you don't have the time, or to help someone who can't pay you back, or to help someone when you are the one that is needing the help the most. Learn to live a life of service. We don't have enough courageous people and enough unselfish people in the world, but these days demand people that are willing to help people even when we are the ones that need the help. Service, service is the, is the ministry of Jesus. He gave his life as a ransom for us. And of course, we do understand that it takes it takes courage to love, to love unconditionally, uh, not, not just uh, superficial love, not filial love, it is, as it is said in the Greek, or just mere uh, surface brotherly love, but, but love that is unconditional, love that refuses to hold a grudge, love that turns the other cheek, love that, that overlooks uh, the annoying things that come from people. It takes courage to do that, to be kind to each other, to be, to be truthful, even when it's easy to kind of shade the truth that takes courage to tell the truth, that takes courage to accept our differences and to act like a loving person. You can, you can love difficult people as well. You don't get to just love people that love you back. Jesus said, if you do that, you're no better than the heathen. And so real unconditional love takes courage. And if you want to know the best picture of what love, what love looks like, look at the cross. Look at our Savior who gave himself for us. He gave it, gave it for the church. I believe that it takes courage to, to practice gratitude, uh, to count your blessings, to be a grateful person. We don't have enough thankful people in the world today. And if you look at Romans chapter 1, unthankfulness is the first step in a five-step process to a reprobate mind. It's important that we have a heart of thanksgiving. But it takes courage to do that when everything in you wants to blame somebody else or wants to curse the world or wants to blame God or get frustrated at the church or blame the preacher, blame your parents, blame your past. It takes, it takes courage to practice gratitude, to tell the people in your life a simple thankful, to be grateful for the people you love and for the people that love you back. It is a courageous, courageous act for us to love one another. I believe that it takes courage to choose to be happy. Yes, happiness is a choice. You don't get to just be happy when you get everything you want and your favorite weather is outside and all of your dreams have come true. You're going to choose to embrace the adventure. You're going to be happy on the journey. You're, you're going to take the downs as well as the ups. You're going you're to face the, the task of climbing the mountain as well as walking through the valley, valley and you're going to choose to be happy in it all. Make a decision that you will speak kind words and to spend time doing things that, that bring you joy. It takes courage to have a good attitude, to see the glass half full, to be an optimistic individual, to be a child full of faith, to look at the bright side, to expect the best out of yourselves, out of the future, and out of people, and to choose to focus on what's good instead of cleaving to negativity all the time. It takes courage. You're going to have to shake yourself out of negativity. You're going to have to change the way that you think. You're going to have to have a positive attitude toward your life and the journey that God has called you to make. It's going to take bravery and courage. I believe that it takes 
courage to learn from our mistakes. We want to kind of mask our mistakes to, to kind of cover them up. We don't want anybody to know about them, but it takes courage to reflect on what went wrong and what you could have done better to admit that you could have put your a little better foot forward in that situation. To look at the life lesson that God is trying to teach you and to choose to not just go forward but to grow forward. To, to learn from your mistakes and to become a better person. And yea, I would even say to refuse to give up. I want to say this again. You are going to make mistakes. You are going to fail at times. There are going to be times when your hopes are going to be on level 10. When you believe that this is the moment where all of your dreams are about to come true. And to see it all explode in your face and fall flat on your face. Amen. But you got to refuse to get up, give up. So I'm telling somebody, it may be time today to get up again. To quit trying to act like the past never happened. To just grow forward. To get over it and to learn from your mistakes. I want to challenge somebody here today to follow your dreams. It takes courage to follow your dreams. Don't let anybody steal your dreams from you. It takes courage to go the extra mile. Don't live a mediocre life. Don't live in a, in a mundane, average attitude and mindset. For goodness sake, you're a child of God. God has put giftings in you. God has put vision in you. God has given you dreams. And in order to see it happen, you're going to pull your, you're going to have to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and go the extra mile. Don't cut corners. Don't look for the easy way out. Don't go for the broad way where the masses are going. But Jesus said, if you're going to get to where I'm taking you, especially on the other side there, and you're going to inherit eternal life, uh, narrow is the way and straight is the gate that leads to it. It's going to take courage if you're going to finish your course and keep the faith and go the extra mile. It takes courage to ask for help. Sometimes we are so independent, we don't want people to know that, that we are in need. We don't want to appear uh, to be a whiny baby. But when you are stuck, when you are addicted, when you are in, unhappy, there is nothing wrong with asking uh, for help. When you don't understand something, ask for an explanation. Don't be an arrogant person that goes through your life uh, thinking you're the only one that has the answers, that nobody else can help you, that you don't need to reach out, that you don't need to lean on a brother or on a sister. We need each other, but it takes courage at times to ask somebody for help. It takes courage to love yourself, to accept your imperfections, to be your own best friend. To show yourself compassion and understanding and respect. If you don't respect yourself, nobody else is ever going to respect you. If you don't have compassion on yourself, you will never have compassion on anybody else. It may be time for you to start understanding yourself a little bit better. And knowing that you are but dust and that your frame, your frame is fragile. And, and if not for the grace of God, we are all miserable. We are all wretched. Woe unto the man that thinks that he can make it without God and without people. Love yourself, but give your life to God. Have compassion on yourself. Be understanding about yourself when you're not at your best. And have a little self-respect so that other people can begin to respect you. And, and in my opinion, this may be the most courageous act of all because it starts with us. Now, I want to preach a little bit this morning, and I want to tell you that if you can't get past your insecurities, and if you can't face your challenges and your difficulties and insurmountable odds with courage, then you will never be able to reach the world. If the church cannot get past its insecurity 
and faced its challenges and its difficulties and its insurmountable odds with courage, we will never reach the world. I want to just, I want to just uh, encourage you to read your Bible and tell me in there where God's people are not supposed to be strong and full of valor and brave. And if we've ever needed courage in this hour to not be nasty and mean and ugly and to just be a jerk, but for God's sake, we need men and women of God that will stand flat-footed, unashamed. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. We need people in this hour. God needs people in this hour. The kingdom of God is advancing. The Bible said, Jesus said, from the days of John the Baptist until now, until his time, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. The, the, the other interpretation is, is that violent men press their way into it. There's chaos in our world as it was in the time of Christ, as it was in the time of the second coming of Christ, even more so it shall be in the latter times, in these last days, as we quickly approach the coming of the Lord. This is not going to be a day where the church has to be weak has to be anemic. We've got to quit questioning ourselves. We've got to get a little dignity in us. Uh, we've got to trust in God more than we've ever trusted in God. Uh, we've got to lean on our faith more than we've ever leaned on it before. But until you can see the demonstration and the confirmation of God's power and his word, uh, you've got to preface that with the action of courage. Uh, if you can't be courageous, uh, God cannot confirm uh, his word because especially in this hour just like it was in the time of the first coming of the Lord God God needs some people that will rise up and say I am going to stand for what's right I'm not going to fear the tempest I'm not going to be afraid of the, the, the attack of the enemy I'm not going to be afraid of the plague of disease of sickness I am going to celebrate my fearlessness in this hour and I am going to stand in courage in the name of the Lord. Would you clap your hands wherever you are right now and just give the Lord praise? Come on, I feel him working in this place. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this place. I pray that the Holy Ghost invade every automobile that's listening FM oh, by over FM transmitter in the parking lot and I pray that the Holy Ghost begin to invade somebody's household this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus hallelujah I feel it I feel it now when Jesus came Jesus began to call people by saying come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And that, that sounds pretty easy to respond to. Well, it was Jesus, but they didn't know who he was. They had heard rumors. He, I mean, possibly. He, mean, he hadn't even done any miracles yet, but they had heard rumors. Maybe this is a man from Nazareth. He's the carpenter's son. We know his friends and relatives. I don't know if there was any knowledge of him before, but, but for whatever reason, they followed him. Can you imagine just going about your daily routine in today's world and some perfect stranger come up to you and say, come and follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Can you imagine the courage that it would take for Peter to leave his nets, for Matthew to leave the office of the tax collector uh, uh, collection? Can you imagine the courage that it would take for all 12 of those disciples 
to follow a perfect stranger in a world where the voice of God had not been heard for the last 400 years and the religion of the Jews was nothing but a shell compared to what it used to be. There was no glory, but I have to believe that something began to pull at their spirit as Jesus said those words. I think when those words came out of his mouth, they felt something come on them that drew them just as it was when Elijah touched Elisha with his mantle and Elisha began to follow him. I feel that pull in the world today. I feel the voice of God and the anointing of God saying I need some people that'll leave their nets and leave the office of tax collection. In other words, I need somebody that will leave Leave the status quo that will get beyond what you're currently doing, that will break out of the ordinary, that will somehow rise above uh, the level of mediocrity. I feel my help coming on in this building right now. The call of God is going out in this hour, but God needs some men and women and young people and children full of courage that will say, I will not only go, but I will follow you to the ends of the earth. Praise God, I feel him right now. Now, Jesus told them when he was leaving, right before they, he ascended up into heaven in Matthew chapter 28, he, this was part of the great commission. And in verse 20, he said, I want you to teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And then he said this, and lo, I am with you always, even until the ends of the word of the world. Listen to me now. I am with you always, even until the ends of the world. Now, how was he going to be with them if his body was about to ascend up into heaven? We know that he was with them because he said, if I go away, the comforter will come. Even, even it's the spirit of truth. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He said, yet a little while and I will come to you. He was coming to them in spirit. And what he was saying was, I know it took courage for you to follow me. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I know it took courage and bravery for you to leave the nets and for you to leave your current lifestyle and your current habits and the ordinary mundane uh, uh, routine of your lives and follow me. And you've been following me for three and a half years. You saw my body tortured on a cross. Uh, you watched them as they put my body in a tomb. You came there and you saw the empty tomb. You've watched me walk into rooms uh, where I didn't even open the door in my glorified body. And so I'm telling you, I'm the same Jesus yesterday, today, and forever. I'm not going to leave you now. You're going to watch my body ascend up into heaven, but I will be with you always, even unto the ends of the world. I want to tell you that God is going to be with us. It doesn't matter whether we are conquering the land of Canaan, praying for the sick, facing death, facing a virus, facing a shutdown, facing destruction, facing unemployment it doesn't matter if we're facing our insecurities facing our past you gotta get some courage on the inside of you because if he did it for the Old Testament believers and he said I'm gonna go before you into the land of Canaan I'm gonna drive out the enemies but little and by little and I'm sending Joshua who is a type of Christ ahead of you. Joshua's going to go first and then you're going to do what Joshua commands you to do. 
it was a type of Christ and so I want to tell you that we've got a Christ that has gone before us and he's still with us and if you want him to confirm his word all you got to do is have courage and believe and be bold and be brave in the name of Jesus oh I wish somebody would glorify the Lord right now I wish somebody would magnify the Lord right now come on if we're going to get confirmation we've got to have courage in the name of the Lord in the name of the Lord right now come on God's putting faith in us right now God's putting faith in us right now I, I'm closing I'm closing but in Mark chapter 16 and verse 20 the Bible said this is the great commission in the chat in the book of Mark it said and they went forth and they preached everywhere hear me they went forth and they preached everywhere they weren't selective with their ministry hallelujah they went forth and they preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Now can I just help somebody out there? And I'm not meaning to be brazen here. But I'm in the word that miracles and signs and wonders they are not just there so that we can call on him when we get sick it's not just there so that somebody can celebrate that they were sick and now they're well or they once was blind but now they see but the miracles and the signs and the wonders are there for a confirmation of his word now God requires faith in advance for miracles to take place but our faith has to be oh help me Holy Ghost right now our faith has to be in the Word of God this book right here not in wives tales not in past experiences not in the percentages of people that we have seen healed or not healed his word gives evidence that when you preach his word and you go forth with boldness and courage and you are obedient to what the Lord said to do he said I will be with you and I will work through you confirming my word I need you there's a revelation right here I need you to preach my word faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith does not come by us sharing stories about how God didn't heal uncle so-and-so or how God didn't heal grandpa, what's his name? It is not based on that. It's based on his word. We get faith by the word of God and by the word of God alone. Hallelujah. Ha. God said, if you go forth and teach them, and you will preach them and preach my word to every believer. I will confirm my word and I will perform mighty acts as I went before Joshua, as I went before the children of Israel and I confirmed what I said that I would do. I drove them out. I caused the walls of Jericho to fall flat. I defeated their enemies. I was the anointing on the stone in the sling of David that hit the four head of the giant it was me I was the rock it was Christ that took down the giant I will work with them which and do wonders and I will confirm my word with signs following but my God he needs some courageous people right now he needs some people that will say I'm not gonna be trepidatious I'm not going to be intimidated. I am not going to...
try to wallow in my insecurities. Uh, come on, I'm preaching to somebody right now. I'm telling you, it's time to get up. Uh, it's time to get up. Uh, it's time for you to believe again. Uh, it's time for you to set your face uh, like a flint uh, and say, uh, I am eradicating every doubt uh, in my mind. Uh, I'm a child of God. Uh, my his faith uh, is in me. Uh, I'm going to be courageous. Uh, I'm going to do a word for God. Uh, I'm going to face uh, every opposition. Whoa. Somebody needs to pray right now. Somebody needs to pray right now. Come on. Somebody, if you're in the parking lot, turn the volume up. Pray. Come on. Shout to God. Come on. Break out right now. Somebody, forget about who's looking in the car next to you. If you're at home, forget who's in the house with you. But my God, somebody ought to rise up and say right now, I'm coming out. I'm coming out of my intimidation. My God, I feel it right now. Whoa. I'm coming out of it right now. In Jesus' name, I'm tired of having a complex. I'm tired of feeling like a loser. I'm tired of counting my failures. I'm tired of being frustrated. I am tired of making excuses. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody. I'm tired of making excuses. I'm tired of being lazy. I'm tired of being second. I'm tired of being last. I'm tired of seeing everybody else walk under the authority and the unction and the anointing. My God, if you could feel what I feel, I feel the call of God saying, come up, stand up, be courageous. I want to use you in this hour. I'm going to make a soul winner out of you. I'm going to make a prayer warrior out of you. I'm going to do my works through you. In the name of Jesus. My God, I feel it. I'm telling you, the Lord thy God, he will go before you, go over before you. The Lord's going before you. I know you're feeling the leading of the Holy Ghost. And you say, I don't know if I should do this. I feel the impulse of God leading me to do this. It, it, it feels like a gigantic step of faith. I don't really know if I should do this, but I'm here to tell you that his word says, wherever I tell you to go, I'm going to go before you. I'm going to lead the way. I am going to destroy your enemy. Somebody needs to get it in your mind. The battle's not yours, but it's God. Come on, let there be an awakening in this hour. Almighty God, wake up the church. Wake up the people of God. Wake up every believer in the name of Jesus. Let your authority move upon every child of God. In Jesus' name, God, wake us up. Wake us up. Shake us, oh Lord. In Jesus' name. Come on, have courage. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. He's going to do it. He's going to make a highway in the wilderness. He's going to make a way when there is no way. He's going to speak peace to you, O Lord. Oh, he's going to do it right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah.